It's a battle of the bots, and in this round, it's ChatGPT versus Bard. Hey friends, I'm Tasia Custodian. Welcome back to my YouTube channel where I share tech tips and app reviews. Today, we're comparing AI chatbots, specifically OpenAI's ChatGPT versus Google's Bard. Are you ready for a battle of the chatbots? Then let's go. All right, we are running side-by-side -side comparisons of ChatGPT and Bard to determine their strengths and weaknesses, or areas of improvement, shall we say. The categories for this battle are UI feature set, speed test, accuracy test, creativity test, and overall helpfulness. By the end of this, we're gonna find out which language model is actually the most helpful and in what ways it's the most helpful. But first, let's kick off round one of this battle, user interface and design similarities and differences, because you might be a little surprised by some of the functionalities. First up, ChatGPT. So in what I'm calling your main chat dashboard, you'll have your current open chat on screen or a new blank screen if you haven't selected a chat. But to the left, you're gonna notice your chats are automatically saved for you. Here, you can start a new chat or edit an existing chat name to stay organized. Or you can delete a chat from here if you want as well. If you need to reference an older chat, you can just click on it to open it from the left panel and then continue on with that specific conversation thread if you like. Or also on the left, you can clear all conversations. Though I like having my entire history here, this is a really great feature that lets you pick up where you left off and stay super organized. And it's something to keep in mind as we move through this battle. So I don't delete my chats, but it is entirely up to you. You also have the option to upgrade to plus or switch to dark mode. Now, in a chat in ChatGPT, you'll have a couple of other options. First, you can edit your prompt at any point by clicking on the edit button in the top right of the prompt. Next, you can provide ChatGPT with feedback on a response by clicking the thumbs up or thumbs down at the top of a response. And if you don't like a response, you can click on the regenerate response option at the bottom of the response. To continue your conversation, you simply ask another prompt at the bottom of the chat. So that's really all there is to ChatGPT's layout and functionality. So now let's compare that to Bard. Upon first glance, Bard looks really similar to ChatGPT, but there are a few key differences to consider. On the left, there's a reset chat option, but you're gonna notice no saved chats here. Instead, with Bard, only your prompts are saved. So to access your prompts, you're gonna click on Bard activity on the left. Here, a new activity tab opens up where you'll have all your activity and queries organized per date. But just to reiterate, only your prompts are saved, not the responses generated. So every time you close your Bard tab, your chat automatically resets. But in the activity tab, you can delete individual queries or delete a custom date range of activity. This is one of the biggest differences in functionality between ChatGPT and Bard. Because remember, with ChatGPT, all your prompts, your entire chats, the responses are all automatically saved for you. And they're all organized per topic. So you can create new chats for every single topic. Whereas with Bard, literally all your prompts are in one chat, regardless of the topic. And then they're gone the moment you close out of the tab. So if you start a chat asking Bard to write a contract for an independent contractor for your business, but then wanna do anything else like solve math problems or get ideas for a 40th birthday party, all of these quite random separate prompts are in the same chat. Understood? Good. But let's head back to Bard for a quick minute. In the top right, you'll notice your Google account profile and beside that is the all familiar Google Apps Access. So you can pop right over to your Gmail, Gcal, Drive or what have you from here because Bard is an offering from Google after all. So it's all connected for you. Now in that chat section, there are a couple of other features to be aware of. Just like we can with ChatGPT, we can edit a prompt. However, for some reason, you can only edit your most recent prompt. With ChatGPT, the edit button is available on all your prompts. 
anyway. Also, like with ChatGPT, we can dislike or like a response in Bard to provide feedback. You'll also have the same option to regenerate a new response entirely. But another difference here is for some reason in Bard, this also is only available on the most recent response. But something Bard offers that ChatGPT doesn't is the ability to view other drafts of responses. So if you're not wild on the first response that you're given, you have a couple of other options to choose from. Again, this only seems available on the most recent response in Bard. Last, something else very different from ChatGPT is that there is a Google it button in Bard. So this is really handy if you wanna double check the response that Bard has given you. You can literally click to Google it. Here, related search queries will appear and if you click on a search topic, a new Google search results tab opens up where that search query is automatically applied for you. So this is a quick, helpful way to ensure a response is accurate or to be taken to at least get more information. So while I like the ability to Google it found within Bard, in this category, I've got to give the point to ChatGPT based solely on the fact that you can organize your chats and have the chat history saved for you automatically. Being able to start completely new chats for different prompts, rename chats to stay organized, auto save chats. ChatGPT is a clear winner in the UI and feature set category. Sorry, Bard. And with that, we move into round two, our speed test. And with this test and the remaining tests, we're giving ChatGPT and Bard the exact same prompts. All right, first up in the speed test round, let's see how well our competing chatbots do with generating a 1000 word university level essay on Taylor Swift being dubbed the music industry, focusing on her catalog of music, her songwriting skills, and her marketing prowess. I'm gonna speed this up for you, but ChatGPT took just four seconds to start generating a response. But the entire essay took one minute and five seconds, and for some reason, it stopped generating at the very end here. I wonder if that's because I told it to write exactly 1,000 words. Anyway, over in Bard, we'll put in the same prompt. And again, I've sped this up, but Bard took just 13 seconds to generate an entire response. And it didn't cut off the essay at the end. You also may have noticed that Bard generates responses all at once, not line by line. So let's run this one more time. In ChatGPT, we will prompt with a follow-up. Now write this in the form of a one-page white paper. ChatGPT started generating response immediately, but since it generates line by line, the entire response took 34 seconds to finish generating. Over in Bard, the entire response was generated in just 10 seconds. So even though ChatGPT starts generating a response sooner, it actually takes longer for it to finish its entire response. Whereas Bard, on the other hand, takes a little few seconds more time up front, but generates the entire response sooner. And with that, we have a tie game or tie match. I don't know, whatever point system we're dealing with here, it's tied. And my eagle-eyed Swifties may have noticed something in ChatGPT's response that brings accuracy into question. And with that comes round three, our accuracy test. Right off the bat, let's head back to ChatGPT for that error I noticed in our last example. And here it is, Swift's seven studio albums. Everyone knows that Queen has 10 studio albums as of the recording of this video. Count it. But why the inaccuracy? Well, in a nutshell, ChatGPT is pulling information from 2021 and earlier in some cases. Now this is a major error in this case because Taylor Swift released two albums in 2020. So you'd think it would at least reference one of those albums. So it's not even pulling information from 2020 in this response. But more on where these chatbots get their information from later, and instead, let's move back into our accuracy comparison. So let's start straight out by asking ChatGPT, how many albums does Taylor Swift have? Ah, now isn't this interesting? Now ChatGPT is pulling information from 2021 and earlier even though it didn't before. So these are all accurate up 
to 2021. Now, over to Bard with the same question. Okay, and this might be even more interesting. Bard gets it correct saying that she has 10 albums. However, it is wrong with the last one being Evermore in 2020. That was her ninth album. Intriguing. So they're both kind of struggling right now in their own ways with accuracy, but let's try another example and okay, fine. I'll move away from Taylor Swift for now. We'll throw a softball question here. How many Stanley Cups do the Montreal Canadiens have? ChatGPT nails this test here and even lists out the dates of the Stanley Cups. Now I'm assuming Bard is going to do the same. Ah, well, Bard got it right as well, but didn't give the detail of the years the Habs won the Cups, which is accurate, by the way. Yes, I've been waiting since 1993. But let's do one more accuracy test. We'll ask ChatGPT to solve a linear equation. Solve for B. Okay. ChatGPT shows its work and gives the correct answer of B equals minus 17. Let's see if Bard comes to that same conclusion. Little <laughs> Bard, holy moly, gets it wrong. Okay, maybe it didn't like how I put in that prompt, but yikes. Let me try it again with like a space. Maybe I didn't get that right. Oh dear, nope, wrong, wrong, wrong. I am actually shocked, but I think it's about to get weirder. I'm gonna hit the Google it option in Bard, click on the equation, and would you look at that? A simple Google search yields the correct answer of B equals minus 17. Go figure, I'm shook. So I ran other accuracy tests, questioned the chatbots about Taylor Swift again, and they both provided pretty well the same responses to my question, though each with varying degrees of detail. So what have we learned here? Well, for starters, don't get barred to do your math homework, apparently. Oy vey. But in all seriousness, ChatGPT did show some inaccuracies as well, simply because it's pulling information from 2021 and before. However, this is a competition. So I guess I have to give the point to ChatGBT because at least it corrected itself when I prompted it again. Whereas with Bard, there were a couple of inaccuracies that I just can't overlook. For shame. And with that, if you're finding this insanely long video useful so far, please remember to give it a like, subscribe to my channel for more content just like this. And now we move on to round four, our creativity test. So let's cover some brainstorming ideas and creative writing, because why not? All right, let's see how well our competing chatbots do with generating ideas for a 40th birthday party. ChatGPT has generated eight ideas, things from themed parties to outdoor adventures to a spa day and more, while also reminding us to choose an idea that suits the birthday person's interests. Now, Bard, on the other hand, generated five ideas for us, but listing some subpoints under theme party. So Bard has kept it a little more general, I will say. Things like outdoor party, indoor party, catered, DIY. Like, are these really ideas? I mean, obviously the party's gonna be indoor or outdoor. I don't think I need a chatbot to tell me that. So let's see how they do with theme ideas for the party. ChatGPT generated five decent theme ideas off of the likes of the guest of honor. Forty and Fabulous, The Back Nine, those kind of cutesy themes. And with Bard, again, I'm finding the responses to be quite broad. Like, casual or formal isn't really what I meant by theme. And really most of the four responses have nothing to do with his likes. So let's try a creative writing exercise for good measure. Let's have ChatGPT write a three-act play based on my love of the Montreal Canadiens. I'm gonna add some additional details here, but let's see how creative of a response we get. Okay, first, I love the title ChatGBT gives the play, Habs Fan Goes Wild. Sounds like a different type of play to me, but I digress. It's a very short three-act play, though there are some fun bits in here. I like how it opens and has me watching a rerun from 1993, though I wish it did say the Stanley Cup final game. 
Scene two, it kind of falls apart a little bit for me. I'm the huge Habs fan. Why would I not know they made it to the final? So that's weird. Anyway, act three comes together a little nicer, I suppose, because yes, it is a long time coming. So let's see how Bard did with this exact same prompt. Bard does not set the scene for us right off the top. It's just boom into act one. What's interesting is it's literally repeating much of my prompt in the first few sentences here. So not so creative. All right, act two is where the creativity really takes the greatest of all turns for me. My character gets surprised by the Habs GM, which okay, Bard doesn't name, and I put the Stanley Cup in my bed? Wow. So obviously it's hard to judge creativity. I think both chatbots did a fine job of at least sparking ideas and concepts. With that said, I do think that ChatGPT squeaks out the point on this one, only because it seems to better set the scene, if you will, and flush out these ideas and lists. I'm obviously really nitpicking here, but isn't that the point? And now we move on to our final round, overall helpfulness. And with this, we're gonna fly through a bunch of examples. First, I've asked ChatGPT to write a contract for an independent contractor for me. And I'm of course giving it a little bit more context as to what the contractor will be doing. I absolutely love this contractor agreement it's generated for me. And in fact, I have used this with a few alterations, of course. Bard, on the other hand, Oh boy, Bard legit just shut me down. No contract example for me, yikes. But there are a ton of other things we can ask for help with. So in ChatGPT, let's plan a road trip. Using an electric car, we wanna know where to stop for charging and food. Wow, okay, I'm actually kind of impressed with ChatGPT here. We're given the route, albeit just stopping points on route. And then we've got a list of charging stations, whether or not they're supercharging stations. And then we've got some food options. And of course, ChatGPT wants us to check availability beforehand. Okay, let's try the same prompt in Bard. Ooh, look what Bard has popped up, a possible itinerary. So Bard has given us the option of stopping for the night in Palm Springs. It's got the list of charging stations and better yet, I think it actually has better food options. ChatGPT just pulled like some fast food. So this even included activities and attractions. I actually love this and I prefer this response over ChatGPT. But did y'all notice that both chatbots had different mileage to Santa Barbara? ChatGPT said it's about 600 miles and Bard said it's only 350 miles. In reality, I think it's somewhere in the middle at about 470 miles, depending on the route. So again, check your work. But for the fun of it, let's just do one more example. We'll ask our chatbot friends, what are the top three SUVs for safety ratings? So ChatGPT has got Volvo, a Mazda, and okay, a Honda Passport. Would not have thought that would have made the list, but let's compare that to what Bard says. And wouldn't you know, we have three completely different answers. I know Subarus are very highly rated, so I'm inclined to believe this list from Bard, but also because it is pulling more recent data. Again, we can Google it to confirm if we want. I feel like this round was a really hard one for me to judge. So obviously with something like generating contracts, the clear winner is ChatGPT. But then when we talk about helping to plan a road trip, I preferred Bard. So is this category a tie? I guess it really comes down to what it is that you need help with. However, I'm very slightly inclined to give ChatGPT the point on this one again, only if simply because it can help me with contract writing, which Bard, at least as of right now, just can't. I'm sorry, Bard. So what's our final score? I believe that means that ChatGPT takes it in a final score of four to one. I can't even believe. But I definitely want to know if you agree. So comment below with the good, the bad, and the ugly. And in all seriousness, there are things you must keep in mind with working with any large language model. We've got things like limitations and misinformation and the fact that every time you ask a large language model a question, it'll generate different answers for you each time. 
And remember, ChatGPT is pulling information from 2021 and earlier from sources like Wikipedia and news articles and journals and books, whereas Bard, on the other hand, is pulling information from across the entirety of the internet. And think of how vast Google's index of websites is. And this landscape is always changing. OpenAI just announced a bunch of new plugins for ChatGPT. So ensure you're staying up to date. I know, it's a lot. AI is really having a moment right now. This is all to say, it's important to use these chatbots in tandem with your regular workflow or as aids to your work, not as replacements. Ensure you're always fact-checking responses and most importantly, Respect the tech. Make sense? And if you made it to this part of this video, holy moly, Tyler Tofoli, you must be a custodian. So make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and say hi. And until then, have fun exploring all the ways AI can enhance your life. So what do you think of this comparison? What do you think of my verdict? Which chatbot do you prefer? Let everyone know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, well, I wanna know. So give it a like, a share, or leave that comment below. You can click right about here to subscribe to my channel. And would you look at that here and here for even more AI content. Thanks for watching. See you next time.